Today let's look at the TwistB Go. So it's the cheapest of the TwistB offerings at around uh, probably about $20 US. Um, packaging it comes with, it's just a, there's a cardboard sleeve, TwistB logo on it. And then the box itself, so the box is sealed with some tape, which I'm going to attempt to peel off. And um, just before I open the box, this is what uh, the label says. It just says Twispico Spring Load Mechanism. And um, as you notice, I, I got the 1.1 millimeter stub. It's made in China. And the container, the box actually has a kind of embossed Twispy name down here. And opening up the box, you get the pen, it's protected with a piece of foam down here so that it won't rattle around very much. Okay, um, instruction wise, which I always like about Twisby that they always give instructions for the pens that they, you know, they sell kind of is a nice touch. So it's just telling you how to fill the pen, right? Essentially how it works is you take off the, uh, the back part of the, the pen, which is probably called the barrel, then you depress the, the plunger mechanism into ink. And then once you let go of the plunger mechanism, the ink will be sucked up into the ink reservoir. And approximately, from what I read on the internet, you can put roughly one and a half milliliter if you manage to be very skillful uh, to get it uh, into this portion of the pen. So nib-wise, um, or rather before we get to the nib, let's just cap the pen. So it's a push-on cap. Nothing, no, no screw-on cap here. Um, you'll notice that because mine's the clear version, you can see very clearly there's actually a, a like a, one of those platinum mechanisms to keep the ink wet, right? Uh, so there's actually an inner cap down there. In terms of the cap itself, it has the Twisby logo and it has a little loop um, for a lanyard, which helps as well if you you know, if you're one of those that, you know, are always concerned about pen rolling off uh, the table, you, you needn't be worried because of this little uh, hook down here. And that's the cap. In terms of the other parts of the pen, you get the, you get a very nice section down here. And it's kind of a strange design. So it has this, raised nubbins for lack of a better term uh, to help you know when how close you're holding to the nib this part here is very slippery plastic and it's tapering down to from quite wide all the way to quite narrow down here not too sure whether or not i like uh, this design down here um so the this section, uh, which is the, the barrel, it has a hole. I believe this is actually clear. I'm not sure why they did it that way. So it's actually a hole down here, and then the actual push mechanism itself. So it's just a pretty smooth pushing motion. Um, so nib which is probably the most important part. Um, this is the 1.1 millimeter stub and I was figuring out which size of nib to buy for this pen. And since this pen has quite a large capacity, I thought, what the heck, you know, just go with the, the stub, right? Uh, since you have the pad capacity. And comparing this nib with another pen, which I had from Twispy, which was, which was actually the Eco. So this is the Eco in cement gray. 
you can tell that the nibs are they look pretty identical so you can definitely swap out you know you can actually just pull out the, the feet and the nib unit and then swap out between the eco and the, the go so my initial impressions because um, and i'm not going to do a comparison right now but just looking at the price difference this is about 20 dollars us this is uh, you know correct I i'm not sure exactly of uh, twisby's official pricing but this one is just slightly maybe ten dollars more than this however this pen feels and looks more you know upmarket in a way with the clip and everything but we'll see how it how it works uh, whether the pen works and how it how it writes how, how does it feel to write so um, I'm going to fill up this pen with uh, Robert Oster's fire and ice thought it'll be nice for a stub and just remembering how the mechanism worked it would just be you know depressing this whole part of the pen like this dipping it into ink and then letting go okay, nothing happened. Try again. Okay, still nothing happened okay, so it sucked up quite a lot of ink maybe I'll, I will take some out okay so let's see how this pen is to write you can see the ink sloshing around inside the, this area of the pen down here. And my trusty notebook. Just flip it to the, to the pages. And I believe, you know, the material that's used in this pen is, it really feels rather cheap. You know, kind of uh, hesitant to use that word, but the plastic is very thin, especially this part, which is the clear plastic. It just looks not as high end as the eco that I mentioned. So this is the Twispy and this is in the one point one. So it's a smooth rider with a tiny bit of feedback. Um, and as you can see, um, this is the type of line width that you can get. So a lot of ink being put down, right, if I were to do this. And Fire and Ice is known to be a very, you know, ink with very nice shading. I'm not sure whether you can see it down here. So it does have quite an, a lot of nice shading uh, from, that, from that big stub down there. So my initial impressions of this pen, it is a nice writing pen for my, um, for what I plan to use it for. I'm, I'm planning to use it for uh, casual writing. Um, and I am definitely planning to switch over the nib to the Eco, right? Uh, that's another thing. And who is this pen good for? I think I'm um, just looking at closely since it was the first time I've actually looked at it. That's actually the word uh, go down here, twist B go. 
I think this pen is good for definitely for the you know maybe students or you know younger folks who want a funky looking pen it is very very futuristic with that huge spring down here uh, and it's very light it's it's probably good for beginners because of the, the size of the section down here you can actually you know fit a lot of different uh, riders people people will use fountain pens for the first time so I think it will be good for beginner fountain pen beginners with that uh, roughly $20 price point it will probably be be good for people who write a lot right because of the capacity down here however I think just from my initial impression if you could kind of spring for that extra ten dollars I think uh, I understand now why other reviewers always say that you know you know spend that little extra for the for the eco is it's just my initial impression right now right with the eco you get nicer looking materials definitely um, same nib though and you get the piston mechanism which feels more robust and more uh, precise and more you know you could draw in and out the amount of ink that you want compared to this uh, plunger mechanism but I'll give this pen a go it is I like it right it's a nice looking pen um, and I'll give you know, my further thoughts with together with all my other twisty pens in a subsequent video so uh, thanks for watching today I'm just gonna put the packaging back down here and I hope you enjoyed this video again please like and subscribe and give me any comments that you have on the videos that I make and I will see you in the next one thanks very much bye